going on everybody c4 welcome back to the channel and today we're continuing with our 2022 nfl draft content series by taking a look at my top 10 wide receivers in the 2022 nfl draft now this is probably the only position that's not going to have like a big exclusive window on my patreon only as i just post the full rankings with my sleepers and draft grades uh, on my patreon at lunchtime but a very very busy weekend for me this weekend i didn't have a video yesterday had really no free time outside of because these videos here it's pretty much just a slideshow it's very easy to get out to you guys um so that's why it's coming out today but yeah if you want to see more in depth more sleepers beyond the ranking support the channel everyone on my patreon from two dollars the lowest tier all the way up to the top tier you get access to my draft files but without further ado let's get in the top 10 wide receivers and we're gonna say right now starting at number 10 i have a second round grade that just shows how stacked this year's draft class is at wide receiver and also when i do my list i like to like look around see what the consensus is and this is probably the most against the grain list that i have out of all my positions that i've done so far i've done just strictly the offense right now and obviously we can get the o-lines i'll be i'll be up front with you o-line is kind of like i take what other people say and i try to just go like oh yeah i see that yeah that looks good because, you know, I'm not, uh, I pretend to be a scout. Thing. But anyone that makes this YouTube content for the most part is just pretending to be a scout. And when it comes to offense alignment, I, I like more so, I, I do confirmation bias. And versus, like, when I look at wide receivers, I'll watch the tape and jot down notes of what I see. I'm just not that, you know, in-depth when it comes to offensive alignment, for example. But for wide receivers, I had a lot of fun. And I that, that's usually where you go against the consensus is when you just look and write what you see and then you see how that lines up against, you know, the pros and all that different stuff. And we got a lot of different names here. So without further ado, at number 10, I have Sky Moore, wide receiver out of Western Michigan, 5'9", 195 pounds, coming off a big time. I mean, he's been crushing it in the MAC the last couple years. 95 catches, 1,300 yards, 10 touchdowns last season. I threw a second round grade on him. He was a surprise because he's declared as a redshirt sophomore, but he's been crushing it for the Broncos since 2019. He's been one of the consistent best deep threat wide receivers in the conference uh, i thought he was a standout during the on-field workouts at the scouting combine he put a real solid numbers 441 in the 40 i i mean you see a guy that right now a lot of mocks have him going to the first round i think i had him going to the first round because near the end especially when you look at the packers you look at the chiefs these are teams that are going to be desperate for wide receivers and there's just probably not going to be enough names there for them to walk away without reaching for one unless they, they plan on being super aggressive once the second round opens up so I, you know, I could see, even though the the, the, the pure talent is in there, uh, I think for him to be a lock in the first round, he's a hell of a good player, and I absolutely can see starting at my wide receiver ten teams jumping on them in the first round for Sky Moore. Uh, I think that his road tree needs to get a little bit more expansive. It's pretty simple, but you know, and, and this is something that we're going to talk about, especially when we get to Traylon Burks, which is certain players in college. It's not that team's job to have them be as pro-ready as humanly possible. It's their job to maximize that player to help them win. And a lot of times it's like, how can we easily get the ball in this guy's hands so he can make some plays? And that's exactly what Western Michigan did with Sky Moore. Uh, really good player. My pro comparison for him is Christian Kirk, who just absolutely secured the bag and destroyed the free agency wide receiver market going to the Jags. But I think Sky Moore, very nice player, good deep threat. I think he brings some good versatility, dangerous with the ball in his hands. Going to wide receiver number nine, it's the Canadian John Mechie III out of Alabama, 5'11", 195 pounds. Uh, before injury last season, late last year, he had 96 catches, 1,100 yards, and eight touchdowns with second team all SEC. Uh, John Mechie was considered pretty much a consensus first rounder entering this college season. And while he did finish the year pretty productive, he finished it with a torn ACL and ended up kind of being second fiddle to deep threat wide receiver transfer Jameson Williams from Ohio State. And it kind of just seems like he's an afterthought. Uh, I think ultimately, when you look at the body of work that John Mechie's done since he's been in college, he's one of the best route runners in this year's draft class. Can play outside, can play inside, so he has some versatility. That's going to be a lot more valuable at the next level. Athletically, I kind of was hoping he was going to be able to test, but unfortunately, with the injuries and stuff like that, you're kind of going to have to go off tape, and these NFL teams are going to go off like the GPS data and stuff like that to get his true game speed. I would guess low 4.5s, which in a league that's obsessed with speed, could push him down team's draft boards if they best decide that he's a slot wide receiver. But I think Mechie's a jack-of-all-trades, master-of-none style of wideout. And those are the kind of guys that end up being terrific wide receiver twos in the NFL level, and that's how I view Mechie. I think he has a very, very high floor. He's going to be a productive player, and my pro comp for him is Amon Ra St. Brown, who had a great, great final stretch as a rook for the Detroit Lions last year. Wide receiver number eight. We're going with Christian Watson out of North Dakota State. Six foot four, 210 pounds. Last year at the Bison, 43 catches, 800 yards, seven touchdowns. Also, just 
does everything for him. Was like special teams, did a little bit of everything. I think for Watson, literally like in my exact write up here, the ultimate holy shit type prospect on the offensive side of the ball is North Dakota State's Christian Watson. 6'4, 210, terrifying speed, arguably the highest ceiling at the position in this entire draft class. I think his hype started at the Senior Bowl, which he absolutely crushed it. Then he went to the Combine, ran a 4-3-6 in the 40. Pretty much elite in vertical and broad jumps. Pretty much screams to wide receiver needy teams. If you think you can develop a wide receiver, then this is the can't-miss player in the draft. Watson has what you can't teach in spades, but the reason why he comes a little bit lower on the list is that he has to go to the right team. The bust potential is there if he lands in the wrong scenario. Um, watching his tape, it's very boring. North Dakota State's passing attack is borderline pedestrian but he did show off speed, took advantage of consistent size mismatches, and his run block is very good because that was pretty much required of him, which is an underrated ability, but I think a lot of teams covet that nowadays is wide receivers that maybe don't have to be an excellent blocker, but be a willing blocker. And a lot of star style wide receivers, they don't really want to do the dirty work. You definitely get that in Watson. His road tree isn't defined. The level of competition is a valid knock, and he plays more finesse than power for a guy that's that athletic, that big. Uh, but I think that's something that you can coach up for sure. My pro comparison is like if DJ Chark was a good run blocker, that's kind of where I'm throwing in there. But Christian Watson, very fun player. And much like Sky Moore, teams that are going to be desperate and reaching for guys that could develop as pure outside, you know, spread the field, take the top off the defense type guys, they, they could potentially sneak into the first round. And I definitely think Christian Watson, even though I have a second round grade, could very easily go in the first. Going to wide receiver number seven. This is a guy that some people have as wide receiver one, and that is Drake London out of USC. 6'5", 210, only 20 years old, coming off a year where he didn't finish the season. 88 catches, 1,100 yards, 7 touchdowns. He would have fit, played a full you know, 10, 11 games. He would have been well over 100 catches, probably 12, 1,300 yards, maybe double-digit touchdowns. I'm still giving a first-round grade, and I'm going the lazy comp and comparing him to Michael Pittman Jr., a former USC wide receiver himself. I think maybe London's a little more explosive. Uh, really good basketball player as well. But I'll be clear right now, this is the consensus wide receiver that I'm lower on than most. And that's just my own personal bias. Two things I, I struggle is Pac-12 offensive players who don't win with separation. Those are those at the college level. I just That's JJ or Sega Whiteside. That's who I see. And it's not Drake London's fault. He's probably going to be a fine player. And my last kind of summary on, on my Patreon is this on Drake London. I already know the Eagles are going to have drafting him because I'm low on him like I was Jalen Rager, and we got Jalen Rager that year. But it's just what happens to me. I still have a first-round grade on him, and what he does, he does well, and that will roll and rock and roll in the NFL and be successful. It's just not a style that I grade highly. What do you get with Drake London? Now, my report on him was pretty negative, to be honest with you, but that's I already know it's biased. I came into it heated. When you watch him play, um, you know, he hasn't played a full season during his college career which could be a flag. His tape is out of a 6'5", 210 alpha wide receiver. He gets a lot of jump balls and wins with his size. His catch radius, very, very good jumping ability. He's a guy that's like 6'5", and if you're talking about Madden, you'll probably still have 90 jumping, which is pretty ridiculous. His best plays come from mossing opponents' defensive backs. Uh, the downside is that historically, these styles, of, these, you know, the style of jump ball, not generating separation from route running and athleticism, those type of wide receivers struggle the next level. Because um, the jump balls is a different beast in the NFL. You're going up against the best of the best in terms of defensive backs and safeties, and teams can scheme it and work it against you. Uh, Drake London also got a lot of screens at the line of scrimmage, which, if I'm going to continue to rag on him, awful tackling in like every highlight clip I saw. He didn't look overly explosive. While USC did find ways to get him involved in space, he just kind of looked like a tight end screen more often than not, then giving it to you know someone like a Sky Moore or someone like Traylon Burks. If I had to say one consistent positive that I really liked about his game that I didn't see a whole lot in a lot of people's write-up, it was one of the first things that I wrote in the pros column, was that he really does work to get back to the ball off script. Anytime USC's quarterback had to extend the plays off script, London was the guy that was always continuing to get open and make himself available for the quarterback. You don't always get that with top wide receivers. I think in today's NFL, where mobility is becoming a plus for the quarterback, getting wide receivers that know how to work off of that of mobility of quarterbacks, be able to find ways to work their way back to the football, that is a very desirable trade. In my opinion, that was one of the most underrated aspects of Drake London's game. But, you know, it is what it is. I am lower than most, but still, even though he's wide receiver seven, I'm giving him still a first-round grade. And like I said, the pro comp is Michael Pittman Jr. Going to wide receiver number six, we have Jahan Dotson out of Penn State. 5'10", buck 78. Last year, 91 catches, almost 1,200 yards, and 12 touchdowns, giving him another first-round grade. Jahan Dotson's one of those 5'10", 
buck 78 type guys, but he plays 6 feet 220. He has some dog to his game, and that's always something that you want in your wide receiver room. I think he has some of the cleanest and quickest route running in this year's draft class, and has some of the best hands as well. Ran a 4-4-3 at the combine, and, you know, I, I think really does line up with the speed that you do see on tape. The only knock I have is his size is less than ideal, but in today's NFL, if you can get open, regardless if you're 120 pounds like Devontae Smith or 220 pounds like A.J. Brown, you're going to stick around this league. You're going to be a productive player. I'm a big fan of his game, and I don't think, if, you know, if this class wasn't so incredibly strong, I think in a different year, Jahan Dotson could be wide receiver one. That's just how much talent is at the wide receiver position in this year's draft class. Uh, so unfortunately for a slight player like Dotson, where you know his size is just, it is what it is, it kind of works against him when you're really trying to stack up all these guys and rank them in order. But I am a massive fan of Jahan Dotson. I think he has wide receiver one potential. And my pro comparison for him is Deontay Johnson of the Pittsburgh Steelers. Moving on to wide receiver number five, we're going to take a look at Chris Alave out of Ohio State. Six feet tall, 189 pounds. Last year, 65 catches, 930 yards, 13 touchdowns I really do think both the Ohio State wide receivers are absolute ballers you know you look at someone like Chris Sims who didn't even have either one of them Olave or Garrett Wilson in his top five wide receivers certainly a bold take um I think when you look at Olave he's been incredibly consistent for Ohio State been a reliable often home run providing player for the Buckeyes offense and you know speaking of that doesn't seem to be a knock from scouting sites that uh you know <sighs> There's, there's this perception that Ohio State wide receivers, like I literally saw it every single time, it was like scheme. The, the scheme works against these guys. But like Michael Thomas, he's a baller in the NFL. Uh, Scary Terry, baller. Like has there been like, off the, uh, maybe I'm just missing and I'm blanking here. Has there been Ohio State hyped up Ohio State wide receivers that like busted in the NFL? I, I get that for quarterbacks. But wide receivers, I think, you know, good wide receivers are good wide receivers. Uh, when you look at Olave, just he gets open. He can win with speed, tested well at the combine. Really, the only knock is play strength. He's not particularly big. He, he's slight. He's a slight build. And will probably get his fair share of bully ball uh, by opposing defensive backs in the NFL. But his burst, solid hands, and elite tracking the ball downfield make him an easy first rounder for me, even though I do think he'll be at the back end a little bit. You know, he'd be a guy that I think the Chiefs, the Packers may try to target if he slips a little bit. But a terrific player in my pro comp for him is Brandon Cooks, who pretty much just shits out 1,000-yard seasons every single year. Going to wide receiver number four. We're going to take a look at Jamison Williams out of Alabama. 6'1", 189 pounds last season before he got cut short with the final game of the year. 79 catches, 15, almost 1,600 yards and 15 touchdowns. Jamison Williams was the best deep threat in college football last season. Uh, 79 catches with an absurd 20 yards per catch is insanity. Uh, I mean, we all need to show love to Brian Hartline. I actually made a, a shout-out tweet dapping him up, and he liked it. Uh, on Twitter, just for the wide receiver at Ohio State, between Chris Olave, Garrett Wilson, Jackson Smith, uh, and Jigba, and then you had Jamison Williams. Those are like, that's insanity. Like, he had to transfer away to uh, get out of Ohio State to find the play time that he clearly deserved. But I mean, just imagine that was an actual offense there. Like, I, I think that trumps what Bama had with Jerry Judy, Henry Ruggs, and Devontae Smith a couple years ago. It's just ridiculous. Uh, it sounds like Williams will be healthy for the start of training camp. That's what they're saying. That's agent talk for, you know, if you're going to view it realistically, he's probably not going to get the IR tag. Maybe week three, four, five, somewhere in that range, he's ready to go. Uh, but I think with that and the fact that he's not going to miss any more time, at least apparently he won't miss extended time, should lock him in the first round. I mean, if you're a fan of a team that's severely, severely lacking deep speed, someone that can take the top off the defense and spread the field for guys to really do the dirty work underneath, Jameson Williams might be your wide receiver one this year. Uh, I will say also in the game that he had to fill in for John Menchie, that that Georgia championship game, uh, where it was just like, oh shit, maybe Jason Williams can't just be the deep threat. He's got to do some other things to his game. Uh, he definitely changed his road tree up a little bit. He looked more than solid, being more than just pitch and hold as the deep guy. His route running looked pretty crisp. He's an electrifying player if you have a quarterback that is great with the deep ball. And I think for me, it would be a dream pick if for really the teams that we kind of been talking about. The Bills to go play with Josh Allen because now there's rumors that maybe Diggs isn't happy with his contract. Chiefs go play with Mahomes. Packers go play with Rodgers. I, I think Jameson Williams, absolute beast. I have him as like peak pro comp Will Fuller. Like when Will Fuller's healthy, when he was there with Deshaun Watson in Houston, was one of the, the best deep threats in the NFL. I think that's what you get from Jamison Williams. And maybe a little bit upside from what we saw for the game he had to fill in for John Mechie and really be the do-it-all wide receiver for Alabama for about a half a game. Receiver three for me is where I go against Green. I'm higher on a player than a lot of people. And I have George Pickens from Georgia. 6'3", 195 pounds last year. He only played four games due to injury. Five catches, 100 yards. Was 2019 freshman All-SEC. 
You know, he's a five-star recruit who, when he's been on the field, has lived up to the hype. But he has struggled with unfortunate injury history his time in college. He's missed some games here or there. Had an ACL tear that cost him most of the 2021 season. But the games that he played, man, even though he's coming off an injury, he was still commanding double teams and making the most of his uh, opportunities on a run-first offense. His route running is incredibly clean. He can win on the jump ball like a Drake London. His hands have never been an issue. And then at the Combine, 6'3", long, lanky, you were thinking, I was thinking like four five, high four fives, runs in the four fours. That for me really solidified him as a first round talent for me. You could tell he is like your prototype star diva wide receiver. There has been public displays on the sidelines of a fiery player and also some rumblings of off the field stuff that may have been kept quiet, may affect his draft stock. So it is fair to say maybe the biggest stock on Pickens is his availability and his attitude. But for me, you know, maybe call me old school, but I think there's a role in an offense for a diva wide receiver in today's NFL. As long as it's not really, you know, you got to play that balance between you want that alpha guy that doesn't really distract. But, I mean, you need more TOs and, like, pre-crazy Antonio Browns. I think you might get that with Pickens. As much as I hate saying this as a Florida Gator fan, I mean, I remember, like, when he and Jake Fromm were there a couple years ago, you were just like, no, you couldn't stop him. That that could, like, anytime Jake Fromm wanted to get the ball to Pickens, Pickens just made a play. And, and like, anytime you have that just get him the ball, he'll find a way to make a play type ability, that always gets bonus points from old C4 here. So I think he might go in the second round. He could go later if the off the field is worse than I think. But he's the guy that's like, you know what? I look at him and I'm not I'm not underrating him like some of these people are. I think he's going to be an absolute stud. And my pro comp when I watch him play is 100%. Like it was it was like I haven't seen this. It's not a popular comp. But like that is the first thing that came to my mind is CeeDee Lamb. Pickens is still sitting there in the second round. The NFL, you know, for whatever you are, just know that you can get a guy like CeeDee Lamb in the second round. If you're a wide receiver needy team, this is your guy. At receiver number two on my list, staying in the SEC, is Traylon Burks out of Arkansas. 6'3", 225 pounds. Last season, 66 catches, 1,100 yards, 11 touchdowns. Traylon Burks is a stud. You don't dominate the SEC like he has for the past couple seasons and end up being a fraud in the league. People are starting to write him off because he thought he was a lot faster than his 4 5, 5 40 at the Combine. But if you watch him play, his acceleration is shit, but his top-end speed can run away from even the fastest corners. It just takes him a second to get up to top speed. Like He is the slowest, fastest wide receiver prospect I can really recall over the last couple years. I mean, another common description for him is he's going to be Debo Samuel 2.0, which, I mean, in terms of versatility and a role he can play in the offense, absolutely. I don't know if he's as athletically gifted as Debo is because, let's be honest, Debo was arguably, like, the best player in the NFL for, like, a month last year. I don't know if we're going to put those type of expectations immediately on Traylon Burks, but, I mean, plenty of gadget plays that he ran at Arkansas were mightily effective, and the, just getting the ball in his hands, he's every bit of a 225, 230-pound running back out in space. Biggest knock against Traylon Burks is his road tree, and that's completely fair. It's like, to a certain extent, you know, Sky Moore, a little bit. We talked about the top of the video, where it's just like Arkansas didn't really ask him to run an elaborate road tree because they just need to find the easiest way to get him the ball so they can put up points on the offense. And it didn't maybe involve Traylon Burks running the crispest routes or having the, the smoothest releases or having him work on extra technique because really the athletic traits for him allowed him to win alone. And sometimes there's a little bit of a learning curve when those type of players go to the next level. But I'm a Traylon Burks guy. And while, you know, I'm not going to say he's a can't-miss player, I, I think I would gamble on his athleticism and upside every day of the week. My pro comparison is very popular to what a lot of people currently comp him to, and that is A.J. Brown of the Tennessee Titans, but a first-round grade all day long. And my number one wide receiver for the 2022 NFL Draft class is Garrett Wilson out of Ohio State. 5'11", 192 pounds last season, 70 catches, 1,100 yards, and 12 touchdowns. I think the you know really the order of the wide receivers in this year's draft class comes down to preference. The group is four or five guys deep, reg you know, in regards to the first round. So it's it all comes down to what the person talking about these guys really really values. If you value guys that are going to be the big outside guys, you're going to like your Drake London and Traylon Burks. If you want your burners, you're going to be pretty high on Jameson Williams. Maybe even you know a combination of Christian Watson to that. Or if you like your technicians, you're going to like Jahan Dotson. And I kind of feel like Garrett Wilson has the most out of all those little groups. He takes little bits and pieces. While he's not the biggest, he absolutely has ridiculous jump ball ability. He has speed to burn like a Jamison Williams. And I feel like there's certain areas to his game where technically he's as good as it gets in this year's draft class. I, I thought Traylon Burks had a chance to be on wide receiver one if he ran in the four threes like some of these people were kind of throwing out there. I was like, okay, if he runs four three, I don't see four three on tape. But if he runs four three... I think I'm going to have to go with Burks. But the fact that he kind of you know ran more in line with what I'm thinking, it, it made me feel okay keeping Garrett Wilson as my wide receiver. One, tested well at the combine with 4-3 speed. And during the drills to me, he stood out as the cleanest catcher on the field 
on Combine. I think it was Saturday. Maybe it was a Friday. But he looked the best. He stood out. Uh, you know, he gets. I think he gets open the easiest out of all the players that I've watched this year. Right, right along with Jahan Dotson, and that you know that's what it's all about: creating separation in spaces where he thrives as an explosive athlete. And you can't watch his tape without admiring his body control. That's a common buzzword described uh, in a lot of scouting reports. And it just jumped. I mean, for a guy that's 5'11", 190, doesn't have a right as winning as many jump balls as he does. I mean, he can win with speed downfield. And I just feel like you're going to get immediate home run playability from him while he works more so on, you know, the technical aspects of, like, the short route running, coming out of releases and stuff like that. But he has terrific hands, big playability, and I think, you know, I'm fine keeping him at my wide receiver one spot. He struggled against press where his size is used against him. So that's something, you know, that's something that he needs to improve upon with his technique, like Devontae Smith, who wins while lacking size on the outside at the next level. But very, very interesting player here in Garrett Wilson. My pro comparison from him is Tyler Lockett. And I think you go to a team that absolutely can feed him the ball uh, deep and let him really develop as a wide receiver year one, year two. I think by year three, you know, that, that's kind of where you got to look at these projections. Who's going to be, like, where are these guys going to stack up once they're a couple years in the league, once they've settled in their offenses? And that's kind of where I come to the conclusion on these rankings. I would not be surprised if Garrett Wilson is wide receiver one then. So there you go, guys. Those are my top 10 wide receivers. Let me know if you agree or disagree with these rankings in the comment section below. As always, very much appreciate you guys checking out and supporting my draft content. More is available on the Patreon. I'm going to try to have tight ends out. I don't know what day is today. Today's Saturday, probably Monday. Monday or Tuesday, tight end rankings should be out. O-line rankings. We're going to try to finish the offense sooner than later. Uh, so that'll all be posted there and then eventually up here on the YouTubes. Tomorrow we'll have a new Pink Slips episode, which I'm excited to show you guys what the future of Pinks holds for us. And that'll do it for me today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. As always, first time, stop by. Don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button. Smash the like button if you enjoyed. Until next time, it's C4 saying peace out.